have to say, I have to be honest, I'm triggered. And, and so, I, so I'm sure there's a lot of people in this room who are triggered as well. So let's just mind ourselves through this. This is a very powerful space that we're in. Okay, so you're going to hear very little from me because I have an incredible privilege to actually have a conversation on stage now with Aileen Flynn, who's a traveler woman and activist. So. First of all, Amy, how are you feeling? Um, I was here yesterday for a few hours and uh, this morning as well. And I have to say it's um, very, very powerful to hear the stories from both uh, women and men and from, um, from young people, you know? And to show that, do you know, like, even throughout the referendum, I'd always use a phrase that my mother would always say, nobody knows the shoe is cutting them, only the person that's wearing them, you know? <laughs> and I've been trying to, you know, I, I come from uh, the traveller community, and in my community, unfortunately, uh, domestic violence is sadly norm, you know? If a woman in the site was getting bit up, there's nobody can get involved because that's a man and a wife, you know? And, and, and a lot of the time you say, what can I do around this? And you have to protect yourself, but you also have to protect the family and people around you as well, you know? So I just find domestic violence is so acceptable in Ireland today. Yeah. You mentioned your mother. Mm. Your mother is your hero. Yeah. Could you share with, with, with us just why she is such an incredible woman? Um, I come from a family of nine and... Uh, of nine? You heard that right. <laughs> and um, my mother is uh, just gone 18 years um, dead and I was only a child when she uh, passed away but I remember how strong my mother was. Now without going into my family detail and stuff because it's, it's very hard when you actually love your family and you're talking around domestic violence as well, you know. But um, my mother was the first traveller woman and the Halton site that I live in that ever got a barren order and that's going back over, uh, I'd say going back over 21, 22 years ago. But, but, her, um, her strength has always stayed with me, you know, and see her fighting back to toast the men or to toast anybody that would um, try to take her rights away from her. Of course, it took her many years to do it, you know, and I understand when people say the women tend to wait until the kids get a bit older, do you know? And I've, I've had that experience with, uh, in, in my um, own family, yeah. but. I see domestic violence all of the time and right now I'm not in a space to be able to speak around that, you know, because again, traveller men are already labelled as bad men in society. We don't want to be labelling just because, as um, uh, Mona has talked about a few minutes ago, around, you know, oh, the Muslim men and be expecting it from men that comes from cultures. But that's not, that's not the truth, you know, a lot, and it happens all over the world, uh, domestic violence and violence towards women. And, you know, how do we stop it, especially within cultures being seen as norms? If you take any culture in the world that has, like, Women can't have sex before marriage, but men can. Women have to keep themselves pure. Men can go off and do whatever the hell they want to do and they're fucking studs. But if a woman did it, did it she's automatically lab labelled as a whore, a prostitute, no longer being part of this uh, community or a troublemaker, you know? I was just saying it to uh, Fiona a few minutes ago. One of the loneliest places you can be is in a full in a room full of people, and sometimes I find being an activist and being a feminist can be extremely lonely, because you're walking up the street and you're thinking, "Is people judging me because I'm speaking the truth?" You know, because a lot of the time, the truth kills, it hurts. People don't want to hear the truth because they have to take responsibilities when they, when they accept it. 
We're talking a lot in Ireland around choice. The next time you hear that word choice, please remember the, the refugee woman in a refugee camp. Remember the traveller woman who's living on a hot site, who was living in very bad living, uh, living conditions. Remember the migrant woman who's uh, working as an au pair. Remember the women who don't have the same opportunities and choices. <laughs> And in Ireland, like, I feel I'm part of an organisation, well, we don't get any money, it's called um, Merge, it's uh, women's reproductive, migrant women and ethnic minority women's reproductive uh, healthcare. And, you know, during the referendum, by God, like, you know, the whole token thing, get in the traveller woman, get in the black woman, it'll be brilliant, and the refugee woman, and we, we'll, you know, we'll, so we're inclusive. But the reality is, it's not inclusive. Feminism is not for, just for, the upper class women of Ireland or yeah. women of the world. Yeah. It's the women at the end. It's women, yes, one out of four women go through domestic violence. And no matter what class you come from, that woman is hurt. Them children that's living in that environment are hurt. In some cases, I'm not saying it's okay, they might have more privileges in getting away than a woman that comes from a cultural background that can't get away because of her culture. I'll give you all a story. Trying to support a woman from the traveller community in the Halton site that I was born and murdered in. Ringing a refuge, uh, uh, ringing a refuge. No, not leaving her in. Her son misbehaved the last time. Oh, I swear to God, this, that, this is what happens in Dublin, trying to get women into refuges. Oh no, should a traveller woman just want to get away for a holiday? It's estimated that a woman will leave a man 46 times before she leave him for good. And that's if he doesn't even take her life beforehand. And a lot of the time, if you call the guards or stuff, oh, but that's your culture. In the traveller community, society thinks it's culture that tra young traveller women get married young, that's not culture. That's sexual assault, that, that, that won't even young traveller women get married young. But yet, yet, we talk about child protection and oh, all people who are saying that they're pro-life and they're looking after the, the welfare of the child. Who's looking after 15-year-old women in Ireland today that's getting married? Children. So, just like, and again, you're in that from such a young age, the control, the fear of not having money, the fear of not being educated to go out and get a job, the fear because you're already labelled as just a traveller, and then you're labelled as a woman, of course you're a traveller and you're a woman, but that doesn't, get, you're inter, inter, what do you call it, intersectionality. So if a woman has five or six kids, like a lot, now Alva was talking about it a few minutes ago, Margaret Cash is really getting a really hard time at the moment. But we shouldn't take away to give that woman a roof over her head. We may not agree with going into pennies and robbing, but my mother would always say that she would beg, borrow or steal for her children. And my mother would, would say that, and you know something, I would do the exact same thing if I had to do it in society today, because society is not fair. And when we're talking about e e equality, oh, you're all the same. I respect women from all walks of life. I try to understand women from different cultures. And I have more in common with a woman, say, from the Muslim community than what I would with a, a, a middle-class white Irish woman because the level of pressures that come, even though you respect and you love your culture, but very few people get the level of pressures that come within. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I, I, I got into media, because there's so much... Uh, the, the, this is a bugbear of mine, I've been talking about it for years, there's not enough diversity in the media. We need people who are survivors, you know, people from various minority groups to actually work in the media. And, and as a survivor of domestic violence and sexual abuse myself, can I ask you just, 
the role of the media, because you mentioned about young marriage and, and travellers. Unfortunately, some of these stories are, are just sensationalised on, on our screens. Yeah, and like yesterday, I admired um, uh, Luke and Ryan when they, when they were uh, telling their story. And imagine opening up a newspaper and having such a trauma in your family and in your life and being questioned and questioning the victim. It's the people who've died, like even I know of traveller, a traveller uh, woman who was killed by her husband uh, going back many years ago. You probably hear about it's, uh, around a tattoo in her chest. And basically you open up the newspapers and it does say, what does she do? You know, and it's always something that will turn it back around to make it out to be the, the, the victim of the abuse. It makes it out to be their fault, you know. And in Ireland today, I understand there's organisations and stuff here to say, oh, no, 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 we, we look after women. Again, which women? Like, you know, there's a lot of women in this state that's left behind. And unfortunately, that's migrant women, refugee women, uh, trans women. Like, it's... it's, it's, it's you know, again, and I'm going to keep on stressing it, it's not just for middle-class white women, like, you know? The refuges uh, not being safe, uh, people in the refuges not being trained to look after women in the refuges, look after the, the young children. Young children in Ireland, if you go and report domestic violence, and I was speaking to a woman on Sunday, a migrant woman. She was married to an Irish man. And she said to me, Eileen, she went to the guards and went to the court and oh, uh, quoting the woman, she goes to me, I was black and blue, she said. The father got custody because he was Irish. So there's another level of inequality in our family laws. The woman didn't have any, any, any ground to stand on because she was just a migrant. Do you know? So... There's a huge issue around trust uh, for, for minority groups to you know, trust the services and the courts. So what do you think, Aileen, needs to happen for, for people to feel more comfortable to reach out for support? Again, it's, 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 it's not judging, it's trying to put yourself into the shoes of, of, of an individual who, um, who's uh, going through uh, domestic violence. And domestic violence is, is not just being bet up. I know a lot of people would say, I'd rather get bet up. Than the, than the mental torture that, that I go through, you know? Because I've, I've heard that state so many times. But the, the services, you know, make a lot of assumptions around, oh, the culture. Instead of just giving, meeting women where they're at and trying to support women to come out the other side of it. Three months support you get in a refuge. And after that, you're by yourself. We're running out of time, Aileen. One last question, because in a previous speaker, Incia said that we, we all have a responsibility. It's not just about the services and, and the courts. What can each individual in this room do to spark change? Well, again, it's, it's, it's not to judge. And again, it's to think around when we talk about choices and look around the room and say, where's the women with disabilities? the black women, the traveller women, the women at the end of society, where's their voices? Because the others, them, other women like them travellers, them refugees, them migrants, them lesbians, it's, it's all should be us. And we're all just as important as each other. We may be different, but we need to value that different, you know, and understand each other. Thank you.